Hey, what's up? This is Chris, and we are taking a look here in section three of SAT practice test three at questions nine and ten. So let's take a look here at question nine. And this shows us a system of equations. And the question reads, in the system of equations above, k is a constant and x and y are variables. For what value of k will the system of equations have no solution? Okay, so we've seen examples before where we have infinitely many solutions. And when it's infinitely many solutions, that means that everything is ultimately going to cancel out so that you're left with a numerical expression like 0 equals 0, something that is mathematically true like that. So that would be infinitely many solutions. For no solution, it's similar. It means that your variables are all going to cancel out, except instead of being left with something that's mathematically true, you'll be something... Uh, left with something that's not mathematically true, like 0 equals 3, or negative 1 equals 6, or any two numbers that are not equivalent value. So when we say no solution, that's what we're talking about here. We're going to end up with something that is not mathematically true. Okay, so let's see how that helps us figure out what to do here with this system of equations. Well, again, we know that for no solution, the variables have to cancel. So if we have a known coefficient for any variable, whether it's for x or for y, we can use that to try to cancel those variables. So basically here, I want to look at my y's and say to myself, hey, you know what? I have a known coefficient for my y terms. Let's see what I would have to do to get those y's to cancel out. And again, we've talked about this on other problems. And if you need a refresher on system uh, systems of equations, just make sure that you get enough practice in because you 100% will see systems of equations on test day. So in order to eliminate these y's, we need to multiply each equation by a certain value to find a common multiple so that those y's can cancel out. And here for this top equation, we could multiply by 5 because the lowest common multiple, the least common multiple for 3 and 5 is 15. So we want to somehow get to 15, but we also want to track the positive and negative aspects so that they'll cancel. But let's multiply the top one by 5 and see what we get. So that is going to be 5kx minus 15y equals 20. And like we always say, please, please, please make sure you distribute to every term including the constant on the right side of the equal sign. And then here for this bottom equation, I want it to cancel out with a negative 15y. So I'd like to get this, if I can, I'd like to get that to a positive 15y. And we can do that by multiplying this bottom equation by negative 3. And so when we do that, we will get negative 12x plus 15y equals negative 21. And when we combine these equations, the y's will cancel. And here this would equal a negative 1, but it doesn't really matter what number that comes out to. All that we need to know in terms of how it's going to impact our solving of this equation is that that's going to be equal to 0 on this left side. Our variables, meaning our x's and our y's, have to cancel out. So these two x terms have to cancel out by adding together to 0. They have to sum to 0. So to use that, we can write this out as 5kx minus 12x equals 0. And we can solve from there. If you bring the 12x to the other side, you get 5kx equals 12x. You can divide by x. Those x terms cancel. You have 5k equals 12. And you can divide both sides by 5, giving you 12 over 5 for k, which is answer choice A. So again, system of equations, this process up here of elimination is one we should know for any system of equations question, but then here, the added piece is we have to understand what it means when we have no solution. And with no solution, remember, those variables are still going to cancel out to zero, and we can use that to create this equation here and solve for k. Up next, let's take a look at question 10. And here it says, in the xy plane, the parabola with equation y equals x minus 11 quantity squared intersects the line with equation y equals 25 at two points, a and b. What is the length of a, b? So if we understand what this looks like graphically, and we can draw that out, that's great. 
Here, this would be a parabola shifted to the right 11 units. So you'd have your vertex there. And then if this is our parabola, they're saying that we're gonna have this horizontal line at y equals 25, and they wanna know the distance between those points. And if you can graph that out and you understand those transformations and you understand that y equals a constant will give you a horizontal line at that value, then you're in great shape. But I would say for most test takers that this is actually an approach that is pretty difficult uh, for people to be able to visualize right away. So let's see if there's another way that we could do this using the equations. And this is actually a great takeaway. But whenever you see that word intersects, as soon as you see that something is intersecting with someone, something else in any sort of graphing type question, you don't always have to look at it visually. You can look at it in terms of the equations by setting the equations equal to each other. So when you see intersects, and I'll maybe color code this and put this up here in red because it's a really helpful reminder, but just think set equal. Anytime you see that word intersect, you wanna think set equal. So let's try that with these equations here. We can set these equal and we can tell, it's kinda of like you're using substitution. They tell you an expression for y in each case. So here, we would have x minus 11, quantity squared, equals 25. And if we take the square root of both sides to cancel out that exponent, then we will get two answers, because remember, x minus 11 could equal positive 5, but then the square root of 25, negative 5 squared is also 25. So you can have x minus 11 equals positive or negative 5. And if we solve each of these separately, we get x is 16, and we get x equals 6. So those are going to be the two x values. Again, picture this parabola and this horizontal line. Those are the two x values where that line is going to intersect that parabola. So if this is at 6 and this is at 16, the question's asking us, what's the length of AB? Meaning, how far apart are these? And we can see that these would have a horizontal distance between them of 10. 16 minus 6 gives us 10. So whether you look at this graphically, which I would say is probably the more advanced way to process this question, and it requires a firmer understanding of your parabola transformations, or whether you look at this equation-wise, like we see written out here, in either case, if we find our values for x where the intersection takes place, we can take that difference to find this horizontal distance in here between a and b as 10. Stay tuned, and we'll dive into questions 11 and 12 next.